Welcome back to Black Girl Couch Reviews. I'm your girl, Christina. We are back for another recap and review of The Flash. The Flash with the zoom zoom. <laughs> Y'all know this is my favorite show. This is my favorite show for its mediocre but glorious <laughs> characters. I love The Flash. I missed it uh, during the hiatus. The crossover was, it, it was, it was right. I mean, the most important things that uh, came out of it for me is the fact that there's going to be this big crisis. It's going to happen in 2019 because it's going to be dropping next year or this year. And that uh, Oliver is probably going to die. <laughs> and that uh, this is the crisis that Kara apparently dies as well from uh with Barry so this is the whole thing that I I don't is it this the reference event that is on the newspaper because that felt different I felt like in season one it was referencing crisis on earth and now it's some other shit but I don't know I haven't been paying too much attention to the newspaper only because it's changing and I want to kind of see that unfold. I don't, you know, I haven't looked too deep on because then the, no, because something about red skies, I don't know. Anyway, the Anna monitor is going to have, or the monitor, that's who it was. I think I was saying anti monitor the whole time I did my else worlds review, but the monitor is going to have the anti monitor. Who's going to team up with some Gotham villains um i think one of them controls emotions or something like that he's really really powerful and he's going to be a big bad during crisis on infinite earth i don't care i put this on my tumblr i need to see barry bring iris into the speed force that is my headcanon it's in the comics i need it to happen it explains a lot of stuff that happens uh for future flash and I think, especially after this episode, that we might be moving toward the more comic accurate storylines. And I'm really geeked for it. Like, I saw someone online say this episode was boring and I wanted to punch him in the face. And I was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> because everyone is entitled to their opinions. However, I disagree completely that this episode was boring or it was filler it was i love this freaking episode and we'll get into it shortly um but yeah a lot of things that came out in this episode gave me an idea of what we might be seeing in the future and we're talking about the future and we know if they're doing crisis this early next year or basically this year uh that they're gonna have a whole different plot point later down the line on what happens in the future and I am really pumped for that so uh that's pretty much what happened in the crossover Caitlin had her little part I mean they used for for a scientist and then she was killer frost and she was fine and then Cisco had his part I liked his less <laughs> than Caitlin's but I did love them coming to <laughs> the fact that I mean the shade going around it's like Oliver came for Barry in the first episode by talking about you know you can't do nothing with your wife in your ear and I feel like y'all know pet y'all know Barry Allen is petty as fuck so <laughs> I felt like the entire crossover he was like nah we gonna roast the I'm gonna roast the fuck out of you at every time and I feel like like word got back to team flash or something because they just continue to make everything about team arrow <laughs> and their relationship feel like not goals like no this is the gold standard you guys are trash you're not even gonna probably make it <laughs> but anyways let's go ahead the scene uh in the crossover where like they're telling Felicity that you know about the switch that Barry is Oliver and Oliver's Barry and 
she, they're like, oh yeah, like Iris knew immediately. She knew something was off, you know? <laughs> like, they were pretty much trashing the crap that Felicity did not even know something was wrong. And like, he said something like, when your love is that strong or something. <laughs> oh, I was dying. And then Barry said shit to uh, Carl on the rooftop talking about, you know, he cheated on his girlfriend with her sister. And they were like, uh-uh, you, you, you do not bad mouth Iris West Allen and not think he about to get dragged. So that was my favorite part of the crossover. My least favorite part is the fact that we only got Iris West Allen <laughs> in the first part. And I tweeted it out. And I don't usually like to tweet too many complaints out online. I'm just, that's just not me. Uh, <laughs> but it really bothered me because I could not logistically see any reason why she was not in it. Like, I can understand, like, you need the players that would play a part in the crossover. And like I said, Caitlyn and Cisco being in this year's crossover, having a bigger role made sense because they didn't really have a huge role in last crossover. And Iris did, I will say that much, had a nice, uh, good role in the last crossover. You know, we focused, we started off on her wedding. You know, she carried on into the next episode. And I like the way they blended all the episodes together, like one big movie. And... This one was the same. I just didn't care about Kara and <laughs> and Oliver Queen. So I wish the Legends were in it. Then at least I would have them. But I didn't really care too much to follow uh, any of what those characters were going through. And the fact that they went to different versions of Earth. It would have been the perfect opportunity to have Iris West Allen play someone other than Iris West Allen. I feel like a lot of people in the team have gotten to play with their character or be someone else. And other than the one time that, you know, she played the jazz singer, she hasn't really gotten to, to chew on anything else other than being the gold standard that she is. And it's not to say she's not a, a boring or fascinating character as she is now, but it would be fun to see her as a villain or or take on something a little bit different or meteor or something that wouldn't quote unquote be Iris West Allen. So I think when you do go to different Earths that it's beneficial to have that character and mainly because you know there's a lot of black girls that look just like her that want to go on that adventure with the team and when you don't have any other type of representation around you it be it, you leave out a part of that part of your fandom so that's my my feedback on why it's so important to continue to have iris west allen in all of these crossover events i'm not saying she has to be center focused no but i feel like another cameo would not have done a disservice or hurt the story at all and i can't think of any good reason why she's not in there so uh off of that we jump right into this episode uh season five episode 10 entitled uh the flash and the furious which was cute um it was directed by david mick whittier and it was written by uh, who's that <laughs> i think this says wheeler and Sterling Gates. And I should have known it was great when I heard the <laughs> name Sterling Gates. I, everything he touches, I love when he does in The Flash. I believe he directed as well, because he wrote this one, right? So he's doing both things. Please have him on more. I really enjoy his episodes because they feel more in line with an adult theme genre than sometimes a more CW-ish genre that the CW can fall into. And yes, that's very generalized, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So you have Sterling Gates and he, he brings a little bit more mature content to the screen. And I can see why some people may not uh jive with that or be particularly interested in that because he he uses a little bit more debate 
And I like the fact that he's also versatile. So he can do a lot of action, but he also can do a lot of character building. And in his writing, you see he's really good with the, the character work. And that's what this episode was for the most part, right? It was a lot of um, character interaction and a lot of dealing with how and where the team is mentally right now. And I think that it is a good thing to, if you're going to do slower episodes like this, have that but i also felt it had a decent amount of action as well so it felt very fleshed out to me um this episode debuted january 15th to a 1.649 viewership uh i was actually looking at the flash numbers they actually don't uh, when they you know because this the when you're giving out numbers like right now for the ratings it's an overview but to see how they they you know are at a, as a whole for the seasons they're they've actually you know they're relatively successful on the cw i mean they really are one of the the highest rated shows and they're consistently higher rated i know it's very annoying that they're 22 episodes 23 episodes uh a season but when you think about it, it's really one long ass stretched out movie. <laughs> and sometimes when you go back and you watch like season three or season four, um, the, the, I wouldn't say three was terrible, but the, you know, the least stronger seasons out of the four thus far, um, five is shaping up to be one of my favorite seasons um, to compete with season one. Uh, and I'm not even sure if season one is my, I uh, know season one is my favorite. What am I talking about? <laughs> but, uh, this is shaping up to be my second favorite season. But when you, when you take those seasons and you put all the complaints aside and there's not to say that there were not valid complaints, uh, in all of the seasons, it, it roughly about two hours of it is mostly good, if not more. So when you take 22 hours and you are at least able to get more than half really good strong episodes of tv you have actually a really good show and it's gonna do well being syndicated syndicated Ugh. so i gave this episode a 9.2 rating because it really felt like it was one of those episodes i would always come back to continue to watch uh I know I'm giving like a lot of background, but I just, I don't know why, but I just feel like I need to explain why <laughs> The Flash is my favorite show. <laughs> um, so enough uh, fangirling. Let's actually get into this dang on episode. So we start off in 2049 and I like that they picked up right where we left off. I was like, good. <laughs> They really are learning from their past mistakes. I mean, that is this is the season. This is kind of a golden season, it feels like to me. Um, in the transition to, again, what I'm hoping for, what I've been looking forward to is the more comic storylines, the more, you know, mature content, the more complicated and more interesting the flash family basically why the flash is so popular it's because of the flash family and the time travel shit that's what keeps me interested and being into the characters so they are are really working well on all angles in this episode so they they jump right into nora being like bitch <laughs> i'm pissed because <laughs> freaking uh ugh, what i want to call him harry for because he looks like dang on harry eobard thawne is like you've been gone a long time nora <laughs> preacher reference anyway and she's like you lucky i came back at all she is super pissed and he's like oh so you found out I, this whole scene is interesting to me because i know eobard thawne he's just one of those he's complicated we'll get to him anyway she's like he's like i know you got questions she's like yeah dude you killed my grandma 
<laughs> right in front of my dad. He was a kid. What's up with that? And she and he's like, yes, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I did that, and I regret that. I I totally I totally get why you're mad, but I thought you I thought you knew. I thought your mama would have told you this by now, and we're all thinking the same thing we all thought the same thing when she bust out on that and it's really interesting to me how much nora really doesn't know i mean her and iris really don't talk i mean iris just shut the fuck down i cannot wait to go to the future and see iris i do not need people defending her i want her to develop into what circumstances have developed her into and i want to keep a genuine i want her to have good reasons and i'm sure she i mean we all know she has good reasons iris is come on how many times has joe done some really questionable things in the protection of his children because when it comes to crossing that line yes the heroes don't cross that line but i'm not a hero <laughs> you know i'm all about justice and what needs to be done take into account the fact that she's the only person on the team despite all of them having powers who's actually killed someone i mean put that in perspective so she gonna do what she got to do and i want them to keep that accurate in the future and not try to water it down to appease some fans that want to see her with a halo i would i, I you know i love iris west allen but you know keep her a three-dimensional character don't keep don't let her fall into a trope so um i think it's very realistic that the scars will add up and there's only so much a human being can take before they break and iris right now has not broken has not been through what iris in the future is going to be going through so yeah the fact that she has not told her her daughter that the man in this prison called Eobard Thawne killed your daddy or killed your grandma is uh, is not surprising to me. Um, she tells him that or he tells her that basically he wanted to become the Flash. So we're getting some of his backstories, but he realized he had to, he became the reverse of him and that broke him. So kind of the the comic back story, if I'm remembering correctly, is he was like a curator at the, the museum, the Flash Museum, and he had admired the Flash so much that he wanted to be like the Flash, but he became the reverse of him and basically uh, just became obsessed. And uh, they became bitter rivals and then he went back in time to kill him and he ended up getting away because the future version of flash saved himself and then reverse flash eobard in his anger killed barry's mom that shit shouldn't have happened he changed the timeline and thus we have in this entire series have been living in eobard thawne's flashpoint <laughs> in case anyone was missing some of that because they really do reference it a lot in this episode and i love it because we really have not fully i felt like in the show broken down what happened not since season one at least i feel like anyway so it's a good reminder that this is the story we were always focusing on the one that's always continuous is this rivalry between Eobard Thawne and Barry Allen and how it escalated to this point in which now their rivalry is in a new timeline except now it's different because Eobard Thawne watched him grow up watched him become the man he is and in a huge way became a mentor and father figure to him and now he is trapped in this hatred of and yet admiration for and it's this demented type of you know i like to say barry allen has a lot of fathers <laughs> i think that's why losing his mother affected him so much it's because he he really does have a lot of fathers and not that female that's where iris comes in 
that that kind of knows his heart and not just uh is one of his many many mentors oh, my child laughing the hell she laughing at anyway <laughs> Uh, she, she ain't having it. She's like, I don't trust you. This shit over. And they kind of go back and forth because he's talking about how he wants to change. I need to help you. Let me help you. Uh, and how he regrets it all. And then he still goes back into, you know, Iris would have told you all of this. Nora's all like, nah, I still don't trust you. Uh, <laughs> But she's saying, I, I will give you time to change my mind. Or was that the other scene? Mm, something like that. Anyway, he says, this will not be the legacy of Eobar Thawne. So in the future, he seems to be captured, right? And he is clearly in some type of meta facility. I think the reason, I still don't know why the fuck he has that thing in there. Not at all. How he's being able to communicate with his mini Gideon. But uh, maybe that's just like a something in the future. Like a, a just like a replacement of a phone. <laughs> or like they could have internet privileges in jail. <laughs> they do have them in jail. So, I mean, I guess that's not too far off. Um... But Nora's like, fuck you, <laughs> and runs off. <laughs> and he looks like, he's got like his hand against his chest. Like he's really been like, oh my God, like he's been broken. I don't know what the fuck happened though. We None of us know what the hell happened to him. Because whatever went down, and I think they confirmed, right? This is the Eobar Thawn, the same one from the crossover. Not the one that was destroyed. You know, he's got like 50 million copies of himself out there. So, <laughs> that's why their battle is, is ever eternal. And why whatever he's going through right now is temporary. Even if he was, I don't think so. He wants to trust, he wants to change something. And I believe he wants to change his legacy, but not to help Barry Allen. <laughs> he wants a legacy that is more powerful than the one he's had before. Because it doesn't seem like he had much in the future, right? Just that he had been uh, the, the arch enemy of, of Barry Allen. And he could not one up his nemesis. But it didn't seem like that he had anything outside of that. And everybody craves a family, right? <laughs> he probably really wants a, a life, a legacy. He wants to restore the Thawn legacy. He inadvertently in his actions caused his entire future to not exist. So he does not want his failed attempt, which he obviously failed if he in that jail cell, uh, to be his lasting. This is how, this is not this can't be how it ends. And with Barry being gone in the future, he realizes that I don't have anything without Barry Allen. He is me. I am him. We are each other. We are eternal. <laughs> so really fucked up, really deep. <laughs> I love it so much. And that's what he's after. So it's not like he's lying. It's just that he's not saying, oh, by the way, once we both get what we want, we're going back to the way things were. It's just going to be even more complicated because now they've all got their feelings in it. They all got feelings. Uh, you know, Thawne has feelings for Barry. Very complicated hatred feelings, but very, you know, uh, you know, again, that begrudging father-son relationship, like the fact that he left the Star Labs to him, he left his assets to him, he released his father from jail. You know, he made that tape in the event that he knew he was going to, to lose. He still conceded even in defeat. So there's this, you know, very malicious, uh, but somewhat respectful rivalry between them and it's entirely fascinating to watch and it's only going to get more complicated including members of his family now and depending what's going to happen in the future um i know i had mentioned that i had saw the actor that plays eddie thawne like he had like a script reading and then like 
Candace Patton liked his tweet and that just could have been a friend thing but I was getting really excited hoping they were going to bring back Eddie to play Cobalt um is that who he is fuck I don't know shit anyway he would be playing a speedster because I really need it to happen in my life um <laughs> so there's this is so oh there's just so much that can happen guys so much and why episodes like this are so important for people to really um you know hang on to because it really is giving us a good idea of what we might be seeing uh in future seasons anywho back at star labs uh we find out that uh cicada is mia the cops have been posted outside of his niece's door that shady ass doctor still there so shoot there was no mention of her but they back they they back burn cicada this week which i'm perfectly happy to see since he is going to clearly still be a big bad for a little while as long as he doesn't take off his mask i'm good <laughs> like i just need him to be cicada i don't need to know who he is i don't need to know his motivations i don't give a fuck i just want him to mark folks that's all I want from him. I want him to just be a scary ass, cold ass dude. I don't need any shit. <laughs> so, uh, they are saying that Cicada can't visit anymore. So, that's a problem for them. Uh, the only way they'll be able to track him is through his dagger, the dark matter in that dagger. And that's only when he uses it. And of course, we know when he uses it is when he's killing folks. So, that's uh, a win. <laughs> and uh they're happy that they don't have to clean up any more bodies right now because they let him escape in the first place um because cisco didn't vibe his shit into another damn debtor like he should have done um uh sherlock asks where's baby giraffe and nora because he's looking at you know he's looking around the room and he's really into what the hell is going on with Nora he is up her ass so so quickly and he's trying to get them to notice that she's missing and I love that he still calls Ralph baby giraffe I didn't even catch where Ralph was but I was fine with it I love Ralph this season I have no problems with him but I I do enjoy the fact that they know how to utilize him they do not want to overdo it and I think sprinkled is the right amount uh just as they're like oh where is nora she pops in with her dad's suit <laughs> just in the nick of time and she i guess she picked it up from dry cleaning and she says it looks better than the green one and he said i rocked that green he's been hanging out with iris too long <laughs> the barry has had a lot of commentary this episode where I'm like boy you could tell you was raised in a black household <laughs> so the West Allen family decide to go to court to support Cecile's first day back at work and apparently she is prosecuting the weather witch chick and at first I was like oh that bitch and then that story took a turn that I did not expect coming which surprised me in a a good way in a way i don't usually get surprised because i really did not like her character <laughs> at all i thought she was a little extra uh but at first i thought it was weird that they just was all gonna go to to court like that's what y'all want to go do <laughs> but it made sense that uh barry was actually testifying at first i should have put that together sooner like why would you go to court in a, in a suit but uh yeah he's actually the csi on the case so he was testifying um iris decides to go with them because joe is apparently in another country <laughs> he had packed up the baby after they had broken his he's like look i'm t i'm tired my house was uh, it was almost broken down yeah last year people keep breaking in my shit i ain't got no time i gotta go take a mental break with this baby <laughs> in another country and uh cecile's like well fine i guess i'll pay these bills <laughs> um so she's gonna go with them and then nora is like all extra thirsty for 
justice. But it doesn't feel like justice. It feels like, oh, she's an evil person. She should get what she deserves. And she just kind of looks at her like that. But she keeps her, her mouth shut, which Iris does a lot in this episode with because uh, I think someone else said that they their complaint was there was not enough Wes Allen in this episode. I think there was enough of each character in this episode that was needed. I understand if you watch the show just for Wes Allen, it'll be harder for you to, you know, appreciate the other character arcs. However, um, I feel like they there wasn't a lack of her in this episode or the family. It was it was it was just enough that that was needed for their storyline and I think everyone got enough attention and she didn't need to say a lot without she did a lot without saying a lot and a lot of her looks and just her observations and the way she takes in things and the process that information and how she likes to handle it differently she she really is the <laughs> backbone I know I'm just Iris fangirling the hell out but she truly to me is the underlining backbone of this show she's the Joe of this show in some ways that she is I always look to her as being the leader I know a lot of people have problems with that don't fucking care but she feels like the leader in the way she she handles things and I like that she's really stepping into that role while also being her own person. And you can still see both sides of her in this episode. So I thought they did a fantastic job with with her character without it, you know, even though people may feel like there wasn't much done. Uh, so Sherlock is still investigating Nora symbols <laughs> because <laughs> after, uh, what was it, Cisco, he's sitting in a chair and he's all excited like, oh shit, we, you know, this sounds like free time, <laughs> like our, our, you know, their crimes down, nothing's happening, cicadas in the wind. And Caitlin says, are you ready to get those shards out of his hands? So she's obviously been working on getting uh, the instruments out or figuring out how to get them out, whatever. I don't know what the time frame is, but I do feel like the Flash likes to stay in real time for the most part. So it would be about four months since we've seen the arrival of Cicada, which keep that in mind, especially when we get to Cisco's storyline. He says, you know, I haven't been able to play PS4 for weeks. He's ready to get off the bench. Because I was thinking, oh, he's ready to get off the bench. And Sherlock's like, you know, I'm. he said, don't be trying to bill us for work. Because we know ain't shit going on. He's like, no, I'll do this for free. And he is really into figuring out what the hell these Speed Force symbols mean. And the... I didn't realize this was like all of the opening scene. It was very long, but it touched on every character together in a room. So they felt like they were all interaction, interacting with each other. And then they all kind of split off to what their individual storylines were going to be this episode. And again, I felt it was very well transitioned. We go to the courtroom. Um... What did I say? What is berries? I'm trying to read my own rant handwriting. <laughs> Maybe that's when I. Oh, that's what I said. Oh, it's Barry's judge. <laughs> the one who, <laughs> when the Devoe case last season, apparently only one judge works in Central City. <laughs> but he, uh, he's the judge on this case. Uh, he starts inquiring now. This was my, my part of the episode that, yes, I will trash myself. What the hell? <laughs> Did judges inquire about the maternity leave <laughs> of their lawyers? I mean, it felt like a real relaxed conversation they could have had outside the courtroom. <laughs> Not in the middle of the trial in front of a jury and <laughs> the defendant. I would have felt if I was the defense, I'm like, this feels biased sir the way you talking about i hope you're, you're feeling good being back at work being a mom is hard i know you know being a parent or some shit and jocelyn is sitting there all types of looking pitiful <laughs> you could tell immediately like she looked 
really different, didn't she? She looks so different than the character when she's dressed up as Weather Witch. And I was not expecting, like, she looked way different. And, like, Cecile, she's doing her thing. Like, she did this, she did that, naming off all her crimes. But she's starting to feel, and at first I thought she was reading her mind. Can we break down what Cecile's actual powers are? I thought it was reading minds. Now she can just feel people's feelings? I feel like they're just developing her powers at random. I don't mind it, but would, you know, would that be cheating <laughs> if you were an attorney? Um, so she can feel that Jocelyn is ashamed and regretful. But I'm like, girl, why is no one mentioning the fact that you are straight up clearly distressed? <laughs> Like the defense is not mentioning. It took a long time for the judge to mention it. Did, did you see Barry talking to court? <laughs> like you okay? I'm like what? What? <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> this is not professional at all. And again, biased. Uh, and I, but I did like what they were starting to bring up. Right, that criminals can be redeemable. We've seen it happen. We have a team member. Who has done some some stuff and some things and we have forgiven them we've we've you know got a hero <laughs> that's done some stuff and some things and we have forgiven them so to say that Jocelyn had reached the point of no return is is uh, something that I like that we were exploring this episode and uh, <laughs> I was like, Iris, I know you knew that you cannot speak out in a courtroom. I was very disappointed when I saw her today. I was like, I love you, girl, but what the hell are you doing talking? And finally, the judge does say, you know, what up? Because I guess uh, at this point, um, wait, hold on. Am I going too far in the notes? Because doesn't Barry get a call? Oh, no, that's later on. So... She's just giving them looks at this point. Nora looks completely oblivious about it all. And she finishes off, yes, by saying we're going to pursue the maximum sentence. And then we go back to Caitlin and Cisco. She is removing the shards from his hand. Uh, she says <laughs> she uses her killer frost powers to seal up the sutures or the, the scar or whatever. And I love that she says in the killer frost voice, don't be a wuss. I like how they do the killer frost transition i like the way she's looking as killer frost now more than ever except when they put that horrible ass stunt devil in double in or when they put her in high heels that are unnecessary for her running so <laughs> especially if she is not good at running them and i'm sorry daniel you're not good in running in heels boo take them heels off run in flats uh so but i do love what they're doing with that transition with her Cisco is bringing up the fact which some people have brought up is sudden um regarding the fact that he felt comfortable all this time not having powers you know it's not uh out of the blue for me <laughs> I I don't feel like it was Okay, go back to season two, right? When Cisco first found out he had powers. It was shortly after he went to uh, went to Earth 2. And he met his doppelganger. And then he had to have Barry really convince him to think that his powers were not a bad thing. He was not like geek to be a metahuman and then he was fine with being a metahuman <laughs> last year and he did say it remember because they swapped powers in uh run iris run and he was like oh no i like my powers and he did like his powers but at the same time he liked them in the way that it can help team flash i can vibe i can do things that are not in the field Let's keep in mind that until the death of Vibe, Vibe was not a 
hero that everyone was like taking photos of even though we saw him in photos it wasn't like he was trying to throw him out himself out there in the way the flash is the flash and he says that later and i don't want to jump too deep into it until we get to some of those scenes but there's there's been the incident that happened with death of, with a vibe has changed a lot of things and i think that if you put yourself in cisco's shoes you can understand it a little bit better considering where he came from starting not really wanting the powers then getting comfortable with the powers but happy with those powers we discover as it's the way he feels useful to the team not because i love being a meta human i love being out there fighting crime no i want to feel like i contribute to this team and in the last few months he's felt that way without having his powers so when he gets them removed it's what starts sparking something in him that probably was already uh always somewhere lingering with him uh then we get to <laughs> one of the funniest scenes in the whole damn episode this was literally the funniest scene in the whole episode some random chick which i don't know how anyone we find out her name's reyes how did, how did that officer or that man not see her she looked very blatantly just walked out of nowhere anyway she's walking towards this lamborghini but we see this man who's being patted down by an officer and he's all like there's nothing wrong with three or four martinis at lunch <laughs> and the officer's like it is when you get in a lamborghini <laughs> dude i was laughing so hard <laughs> I just thought it was some random conversation. Like, who, the, who does this? <laughs> there was a lot of humor in this episode as well. Without it being season four humor that was sometimes funny, but on the corny side. Like, this felt like genuine ass. You would probably randomly walk up by and hear some shit like this because i hear the most random things walking around buildings or outside even when i'm on the phone with people at work just the shit you hear it's that that's that people really say and don't realize how fucking stupid they are are hilarious so <laughs> she gets in the car using some keys and starts up the ignition and i think that's a really cool power so I guess whatever has an engine, she has Meditech to control it. We get back to the trial and Barry's phone goes off in the middle of the courtroom. And I'm like, really? This is the mm, everything on the side of the prosecution <laughs> is not OK. Jocelyn, you could have got a better attorney. You definitely public defendant. <laughs> um, he says he has to go. Uh. I didn't first realize why uh, Cecile was freaking out again and still hadn't hit <laughs> dummy that he was there until she said it to testify. And finally the judge is just like, okay, uh, <laughs> Miss Horton, hello. Are they married, Joe and Cecile? I thought, no, they're not married, are they? Mm, interesting. And, uh... He tells her that you need to step on it. He's like, I gotta go. There's a robbery. We'll be right back. Him and Nora bounce. And uh, we get back to the car chase. And Chick is just rolling down the street, feeling real comfortable in her Lamborghini. And we see the flash. She sees the flash behind her. So she knows he's coming. And he tries to phase into the car. But unfortunately... Uh, I have no idea what the math is behind this shit. <laughs> anyway, whatever he does, uh, well, whatever blocks him, uh, you know, she gets away and he can't stop vibrating. <laughs> and my smut mind immediately went, oh, so this is what he looks like at peak orgasm. <laughs> and I was like, you lucky, Iris. You're so lucky. We get back to Star Labs. I like this scene as well. No, no uh, pre. It felt like a, they're so used to what happens at Star Labs that they're not like, oh, you guys are here. What's going on? They don't even freak out. They just flash right into and they're just like, guys, we need your help. And it was like, 
with the what? <laughs> Sherlock is so calm. <laughs> it's just always funny. I like him. Uh, I like him more than I thought. Like, the accent still doesn't do it for me. However, they are they are still managing to make him comical. And I didn't think that was possible. I thought I was actually going to hate him. And he's actually starting to grow on me. But Caitlyn and Cisco are basically one brain. Because they just look at each other and just like, yeah, go fall into the pipeline. And that will basically destabilize your powers. Because that'll be, you know, that's the... Uh, the power dampening cell and <laughs> this whole scene was just hilarious because <laughs> they're because uh nora is holding on to barry phasing him because if she does not phase him he will just fall and he could just basically fall to his death so afterwards sherlock is basically like you know yeah you could do that or you're just gonna fall to your death and nora can't continue to phase him like that <laughs> because <laughs> one of them will disappear or something like that i don't know and then barry says i trust you cisco and he goes okay we'll move over here and he's like oh no 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 take a step back and he's just like cisco come on barry was uh grant gustin was hilarious this episode his comic timing was great uh <laughs> and his look at cisco like come on jesus christ and he finally falls into the dampening cell. Uh, hooray. We find out that the Meditech had destabilized his phasing. Their words, not mine. <laughs> uh, and Barry gets benched. He's, she's like, it's going to take 24 hours to fix this. And I love that. I love that they finally give Barry some uh, natural or you know you know something that's a that blocks him that's not like the same shit <laughs> it's like you know it's usually because oh something you know because he had to be dumb for someone else to be smart uh but this felt like a, a legit thing like hey you try to do something it didn't work guess what you're not going to be healed in one hour this is going to take some time so team guess what you're going to have to step up why Barry is benched in a dampening cell. <laughs> uh, he immediately is like, Cecile's going to kill me again. He could have said, Mr. Cecile's going to be so mad at me. I felt like that's what his uh, melaton <laughs> would say. <laughs> but he's just like, oh no, if I don't get there, <laughs> she's going to be ticked. And Nora's like, oh, I can testify for you. And he's like, mm. Cecile gets like absolutely not like you got to be freaking you got to be freaking kidding me and <laughs> seeing Cecile Nora and Iris three beautiful black women have one scene together not involving any of the main protagonists even though I consider Iris a main protagonist but having them in a scene together <laughs> And Nora just looking adorably oblivious as always. Nora, you got to work on your... <laughs> I don't... Now, there are some rumors going around. And I'm just going to throw this out there now. That she could be uh, like Bart Allen in The Flash. And uh, spoiler alert for comic spoilers. Like, basically, Bart Allen, Allen he could not use his speed because uh, it would age him significantly. And so... Iris had to bring him back in time to Wally West to, um, and so <laughs> that's why I'm like all oh, Flash family stuff, uh, had to take him back in time to Wally West and then that was able to stabilize him so that he would not age out of existence, but he was really young. Uh, he was not as old as he, he, he appeared. And a lot of people are starting to think that maybe Nora's immaturity is due to something similar. I, uh, I don't think so. I, w it, it's possible. I'm not gonna throw it out there. Um, like it can't happen. However, 
I feel like at the conclusion, unless something really weird happens in crisis, that Nora is going to eventually go back to her timeline. Uh, so I, I, that's the only thing that that's holding me back from that theory because then she would go back to her. I mean, I guess she still could go back to her, her timeline as a, as a grown ass woman. And then a lot of people are really like, I personally love Jessica Barker Kennedy. I know everyone does not like Nora. I see her, um, as a flawed, I mean, I get it guys. People, yes. Oh no. She's, she's older and she should be more mature, but guess what? I know 50 fucking year olds that are just dumb as fucking immature as hell. So it's not unrealistic. I feel like it's a natural flaw that Nora is excess. That's her name. She's extra. She's not, she's not stupid. Cause someone else that has told me, I don't like those comments that say she's dumb as hell. She showed actually a lot of intellectual growth in this episode. She was able to make, you know, some, uh, you know, some decisions in this episode. She was able to um, work without her father. She had confidence in this episode. Yes. Is she still learning as a person? Absolutely. But again, <laughs> she came to the game really late. Barry just happened to be younger and he made uh, some of these, as Iris pointed out in this episode, a lot of these same mistakes and continues to make a lot of these mistakes, um, or setting up for potential mistakes. So, I, I, I feel like she gets a really hard rap and I really want Jessica Parker Kidney on the show for a really long time because I really like her character. And again, my headcanon is that she eventually does go back to the future that uh, the future can't necessarily be, I mean, it's going to be changed, but it's going to be changed for, you know, you have to, as, as Jay said, right, you can put shit back together, but I mean, you have to you change the timeline shit changes right and all of it affects everyone so nora is in effect doing what uh barry did in flashpoint and now the lives that she's affecting is her own whole her whole entire existence and uh the existence that came before that so uh you have nora <laughs> looking oblivious in these moments sometimes because she really is just chipper really happy to be there she's super psyched to be just involved she she unfortunately did not grow up <laughs> with you know being involved she she's been put on the the peripheral for so long she probably knows iris and and she probably you know we don't hear any mention of cisco but she knows all their names so clearly they've kept her away and in the dark of so much of her of her history and she's just so uh sometimes overly giddy to to be there that she she doesn't use her best judgment but that's not a a, a character mar that's a, a it's a natural flaw and iris is like you know i mean do we have a choice here you know she she can go ahead and do it let's just go ahead and uh you know take care of it because nora's like i got it i got it so still still freaking out but she tells her to go get her shit and you know log herself in properly and uh Cecile tells Iris that she wants to ask for a lighter sentence because she knows that Joss is remorseful. Iris looks skeptical. However, she also looks open. Like she trusts uh, Cecile's judgment. And I like that. She does not question her. She's like, oh, okay. Um, you know, this woman did do. And I do like what happens next. It's not that Cecile. And that's the part that I feel like Nora missed. And I like that not only did Iris, but Cecile did not need, to, they did not feel the need to tell her where she went wrong. They're going to let her learn her own lesson or, and I feel like Cecile was like, I don't need to tell you what I was trying to do. You should have known or understood that, or I thought you had comprehended that because it felt like she was given all types of looks <laughs> and Nora was paying no attention in that courtroom. Um, so she tells uh, Nora that when she testifies that you're going to follow my lead and she's kind of asking her these questions that's pointing out some very valid points that although Joss could have at the airport hangar 
you know, directed all of this lightning, despite how, you know, terrible and destructive it was. Yes, it was really destructive, but she never directed that at any of the bystanders or she didn't go after people. And so she's trying to show that, yes, she did a bad thing, but she it also could have been worse. So that was Cecile's intent. Like, no, you should pay for your crimes, but the punishment should fit the crime. You should not want someone nailed to a cross just because they made a mistake. And I feel like in this, this whole trial, you can tell that, you know, which is another part that's brought up. It's interesting in this trial that I felt like once Joss had Meditech in her hand, it was kind of like all of the possibilities bubbled up and she had a choice to make that uh, you know a feeling that never really got resolved in her and she finally had the means to do something about that and that's what happened and then out of anger she you know uh you know turned and really wanted to make the flash quote-unquote pay and uh yes it could have escalated but it didn't escalate and uh <laughs> Nora's not happy <laughs> she's like that's it that's all the questions you're gonna ask me and we get a chance for the defense to do a cross exam and Nora decides to unleash all of her opinions like no this chick is dangerous your honor <laughs> because the defense does do something that is very scary and it was of my opinion, and they've been uh, hinting at this all season, particularly with the nurse. So someone who's not a meta, and then you have someone who hates metas, and now you have a trial in which the defense brings up the idea that, hey, could the dark matter in this meta tech corrupt the person? infected with it are is let's not blame the person let's blame the dark matter let's get rid of this thing that creates meta tech that creates meta humans that do these terrible things in this city in particular in which crime has escalated out of control and of course they've decided to finally throw Gotham in this universe or mention that it's part so if they're really going to really build it out metas are everywhere so they are starting to pick up where I didn't honestly I've been saying the whole time that the whole, the legend's future was not connected at all but apparently they, that's the route they're going because the evidence is all pointing in that direction so I stand uh, corrected that they are actually going to start going down that route in which there's going to be a world where maybe being a meta is not a an accepted thing like yes maybe they're tolerated when they're i mean it can't be that bad because they have a flash museum right um uh, but she said she went to the flash museum when she was a kid is the flash museum still there in 2049 good question that's one question uh because that's my only wrench in the plan of if they hate metas why would they be so in love with the flash i would think they would hate the flash because he is the the hero uh but also a meta it would that would be really counterproductive to hate metas if you're going to continue to uh build a whole museum to this meta uh but uh it could also be that um maybe they're just it's an ostracized type of thing like it's not that people hate metas but maybe there's a certain uh target or a certain group or or terrorist organization that targets metas uh that could be it um it could be that they are experimenting our metas in the future it could be that they are hunting metas in the future there are a lot of possibilities but they are definitely bringing in the idea that normal folk don't necessarily have happy feelings regarding metas 
And the only person they've really seen as a hero thus far is The Flash. I mean, like I said, I don't feel like Vibe ever really put himself out there to be seen as the hero of Central City. Uh, he felt like the guy that shows up with um, <laughs> that shows up with The Flash to help out. And then, you know, they it's the same way they kind of treat... Uh, Nora for the most part like you had it oh she's the new meta last week where her her name was out there in the media now <laughs> they just treat Barry's sidekicks like oh he must be training some other person today <laughs> but they still don't consider them that uh, any type of hero uh but then Wally got in the paper right I don't know I don't know anyway um back to Caitlin and Cisco before we be here all damn night um <laughs> <laughs> they are talking about the dagger and Cisco figures out that if you remove uh, that basically once he was looking at his uh, shards he realized that when he took them out he took all the the shards had removed all the dark matter that's how it was draining the powers so they realized that Cicada's uh, power dampening dagger is a metahuman cure basically <laughs> because it gets rid of the metahuman dark matter dna he doesn't have to kill people at the end but he just chooses to kill people anyway he could just pre prick at people shit <laughs> if he really just wanted to get rid of their powers <laughs> but he's like no every money no he does make his his intentions clear he said every meta must die so terrible that was the worst thing that ruined his character honestly <laughs> That whole episode in which we had to know him ruined his character for me. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, the minute that they start talking about, uh, Cisco anyway, starts talking about a meta hearing cure. <laughs> and talking about getting rid of people's powers. Caitlin's like, wait, hold the fuck up. Like, she became very, um... <laughs> she became very uh what oh shit the minority quick right she was like what, what, what you mean people don't need their powers um i'm not down with that and cisco's like uh no this can fix the metas that we created and she's like oh no hold on let me drop some facts for you this is thon's fault and He's the one that created the metas from the particle accelerator. Let's 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 blame him for all the metas in Central City first. And then Cisco claps back with, uh, have you forgotten Flashpoint? Have you forgotten the Metabus? Have you forgotten the satellite? <laughs> and I was like, okay, after it. Uh <laughs> and She's just like, well, you acting like we need to be fixed, like we broken. I don't think that's a problem, and I, I don't, I don't think that nothing's wrong with me, because that's what you kind of saying right now. Like we're, and I get his point. Like he's a meta as well, so I felt like this argument was better coming from someone who is, in fact, a meta. So it's not like he doesn't understand the what it felt like, because that's where Cisco goes in, or where Caitlyn goes into, like, hey uh because he, he tells her that hey i remember you last year talking about you wanted a cure why when we can find a cure you're all of a sudden not on this bandwagon anymore and she's like yeah because i thought i wanted to get some get rid of someone because i thought i was going to become evil and now i realize i don't have to make that choice because you guys helped me come to realize that i can be killer frost which they call still call her killer frost is that just because that's what she was called on Earth 2 so it's stuck? Because she hasn't killed anyone yet. Um, at least on on this Earth. <laughs> uh, he tells her that, hey, every, not everyone wants what you got. Just because you lost Katie or Killer Frost and you realize you were missing a piece of yourself. Uh, I, I don't have that same experience. I had my powers removed and I was happier without them I realized that y'all got family and you got something of worth um putting yourselves on the line for and you you know <laughs> Iris Joe they they can take care of themselves basically <laughs> Barry can take care of himself 
if their family gets if they're willing to take they have really consciously made this decision because yeah right because technically cisco got his powers from the satellite explosion so in a previous timeline previous to thawne's timeline he could have possibly not had powers so he doesn't know what that feels like or what that would not have felt like in another and then think about it in uh shit think about it in um oh shit sticks uh uh flashpoint he was a billion he was a tech genius he was not a meta and even caitlin was not a meta so this timeline definitely made them metas it feels like anyway uh so yeah he is more comfortable being human he wants a family i want a wife i want a kid this stress is too much i cannot I don't want them wondering if their dad's coming home at night. I want to have a regular nine to five and I want that nine to five to be the tech guru <laughs> for team flash. Like I can work for star labs and I can take the risk that comes with working at star labs. But for the most part, I don't want to be out in the field. I don't want to be the flash. And again, going back to what happened to him, I think that wake up call that he could be hunted as vibe never really think you know sometimes you don't think about shit until it happens and i think it was always fun for him to have his uh powers it was always cool for him and he was always fascinated by what he can do that's a whole different mantle than going out into the field time and time again with the idea in your brain that i am going to die and that is what barry does every day that's why he's always half dying i mean he almost died like a month ago <laughs> and his family wouldn't have known i mean we saw what happened at star labs remember when he got electrocuted they're really starting to hone in on the fact why the flash being a superhero and what it means to be a superhero is important that it is not something that just comes to anyone who gets powers or abilities you have to be a certain person to go out there and take that risk and everyone who's rolling with you got to be willing to take that risk as well and that's a choice that you have to make and i think cisco never consciously made that choice in my opinion and then when cicada hunted him down in particular he was he finally came face to face with that choice and he was hunted in a forest he has this thing guys called PTSD it's an adult term look it up <laughs> I'm not trying to be an ass but sometimes it can get a little annoying when people don't even take the time to try to consider the mindset before they say this is random PTSD does not it's not gonna pick its time huh it comes after a traumatic experience he had a traumatic experience. He almost died. He even said, you saved my life, fangirl. He literally had to kill himself off in the media. And he had scars from that. And he has no family. He does not have a brother. <laughs> and then even his brother that he had, he didn't have the best relationship with Dante. And so, yeah, he selfishly is starting to think about himself after experiencing something that he's not getting over he's now comfortable behind that desk and i don't feel like that's in a lazy writing or out of the blue to make a, a storyline like that just because it doesn't fit with the cisco that you know or the cisco who would that you feel would make these decisions i think that this is a, a natural progression and if it didn't have it I would not be complaining as much, but it would be like, oh, it's kind of like Iris never again. I'm still waiting for the conversation of how did you feel to shoot Barry Allen, your husband, the love of your life, his evil version of who you can understand why went evil in the back. How does it feel to have blood on your hands? How does it feel? No one has asked her that question. How do you cope with it? How are you dealing uh and that's why i really like the, the therapy session you know last year where everyone felt she was being irrational like of course she knows barry had to make the sacrifices you still ain't gotta be happy about it you still ain't gotta be 
okay with it. You still can't say like, I'm mad. I'm still mad at you. Even if that anger is irrational, even if yes, uh, <laughs> it would have been silly to have a five minute conversation. I deserve that. And you didn't give it to me. So her, uh, Cisco in this moment saying, you know what? I just, I'm, I really don't want to do it. Uh, after going through what he went through and then living a very comfortable life afterwards. And then not only that, still being a productive member of the team, still being to help out. He had his satellites back. He felt more in control than he has in a while. And he realized that, oh, being vibe does not define me. It does not tell me who I am. Cisco Ramon is who I am. The tech guy, that's who I am. And yes, this cure is going to help me get back to that so that I no longer have that pressure on me to go out in the field and help. You guys got this fucking extrapolator. You don't need me. And I think that's fine because I personally think that I'm, I'm fine with going back to regular old Cisco. I think there should be more of a balance of humans on this team because let's be real. It's a huge range of meta humans at this point <laughs> and if we are going to go the killer frost right route which i hope we don't um you know that could be a, a point where we might jump off but i don't i still don't feel like we're going there um anyways after that uh soapbox uh joss is being transported why i have no idea maybe oh maybe after the trial and uh some random the rando reyes chick she <laughs> pulls in front of the the police vehicle uh of course shuts the engine down and then salutes and i'm not entirely sure why uh it was obviously something just to give away to identify her <laughs> so i could say she was in the military uh Joss doesn't know her again unexpected I thought they knew each other <laughs> and she's like I'm here to help you <laughs> come on basically back at Star Labs Iris is looking at footage from the uh camera in the police vehicle and she of course realizes the the military salute and uh she has Cisco look up uh, military personnel Nora is there with her and she is all types of convinced that Joss it, it had something to do with it I was just trying to say you know maybe not and uh, I can't remember what Nora said but she did have a good idea at this moment because that's when or maybe that was a later scene I don't know uh, <laughs> she says that bad guys don't change that's why she's convinced that she had something to do with that. And I'm like, well, it's too late to realize that now. <laughs> so we all knew what this was leading up to. I mean, it was, the writing was all over the wall that she, this was all leading up to Nora doing something really fucking stupid. Um, not like she was not, I mean, it's not like she was not half convinced to keep going anyway. Uh, Iris is basically like, we only know what we know. All we know is is she broke out of prison, with, or this chick showed up and got her out of prison. We don't we don't know the facts yet, and we find out that Reyes was dishonorably discharged, and that her record is sealed. And then Iris says that she'll call her dad to see if they can call in some favors. I, I love that the West have a uh, have muscle in this town. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Barry pops up on the monitor and is just like, guys, can you send down some food? <laughs> so funny. Uh, we get back to Reyes' garage, I guess, where she's hanging out. And she's just totally trying to form a band or a team. <laughs> she's like, I want to form the Young Rogues. And she wants Joss to help her break into Argus so that they can get something that's very very powerful for them and she says that you can control the weather so you're the only person that can hit this circuit breaker or whatever to shut it down uh they need four minutes Joss is like nope I'm going back to prison I want to do my time for my crime 
and I'm not my dad and Reyes is like yeah I know you just you don't want to be your dad you're totally convinced of that but I totally want you to be on my team but at the same time she does not force her she's just like look you're gonna see that once a criminal always a criminal nobody treats your ass right once you have made a mistake nobody gives you second chances and she allows her to leave and I immediately was like Mm, Nora's gonna fuck this up somehow <laughs> Nora is gonna come make this haul come to fruition and uh, we go back to the scene where Sherlock they, I love they sent him to go feed Barry but he takes this this opportunity to start questioning him about the, the symbol he's like yeah 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 when you got out of the speed force yeah you remember that you were writing some shit all over the walls what was that all about and he's just like I don't know like uh Cisco figured out a line and he's like yeah we couldn't figure nothing out you know we even tried to use Gideon what the hell is Gideon <laughs> and he clearly has not you know poked around Star Labs <laughs> too much uh he wants to know about the future he's like this future is very interesting and I need to know about it <laughs> Uh, he tells him that Legends dropped this book off and it's called Cage Desire and I'm like oh my god did Rory did Mick Rory write that because if he did <laughs> I'm gonna be laughing my ass off I don't think so but it's still hilarious because that that's my head canon anyway that he wrote it I like that they're still keeping the the connectivity with with Legends especially since Wally uh, was with them I think that's nice not to forget them and to keep the you know not not act like they're all strangers and they've been doing it a lot this year on the flash like you know Iris name dropping the fact that she talks to Felicity or Felicity calls her legend stop by to say what's up uh, I, I like that Joss sends an SOS by <laughs> satellite by exploding some satellites because they think there's a huge storm and Nora gets there and she's all types of pompous basically like oh now you can add this to your record and Joss is like look I'm turning myself in I thought she was the Flash because the Flash would have totally done what the Flash does and she's like I, I just want you to come with me so I can show you where the hell I was taken because this chick kidnapped a car and she stole me and I need you to basically vouch for me and she <laughs> knows that if she can get the flash to vouch for her and collaborate corroborate the fact that she did not escape that she can get she can show that she's not like her father she's not a career criminal she wants to be one and done and that's it uh hi for a second again i don't like i maybe i'm just having a night i was surprised again because we go to ccpd iris is getting the sealed record from uh, a general and she's like yeah tell your dad you know something 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 and she's like the west thank you and i'm like oh stand your name girl stand your name uh but just as we <laughs> <laughs> are about to think this is the the scene where iris is just gonna look through the records nora zooms in with a handcuff to joss and i'm like cold <laughs> i'm like damn she's like one criminal coming right up she didn't say that but i like she was so proud of herself she was so happy. She's like, yeah, take this take this trash back to the trash can. Oh, I could not even believe she straight up turned her ass in. <laughs> but this is how we create the downward uh, spiral in our society, folks. We need to be able to see past one person's mistakes. I'm not saying people don't make one mistake and keep making mistakes. But everything about Josh said, I'm sorry. From her body language to her posture. I mean, yeah, she could have been faking it. But at what point? I mean, the evidence was clear. There was not any way she was not getting a conviction. And she didn't even want one, right? Because in court, she said, I did it. Like, she admitted it. Like, she sabotaged her own trial and admitted guilt and said, I deserve my sentence. What more do you need, Nora? What more do you need? And maybe she felt like, oh, y'all, you said that in court because you escaped. 
but still girl it would have taken you 2.2 seconds to check it out you're the flash anyways um uh iris witnesses all this and again she don't say shit she's just like oh okay see what you doing my child out here acting a goddamn fool but i'm not gonna step on her because she's doing what she's supposed to do she's supposed to catch criminals but she needs her to understand that that's not all you are you're also supposed to be a hero and hero do things for people and see past people and i love the conversation she has with barry later in which she he drops some knowledge on, on what it means to be a hero uh but we do go back to the speed lab and she's just running around and iris does come in after she's reviewed the sealed record and she says that's exactly what your dad does he runs when something's on her mind and she's like oh nothing's on my mind and i'm like girl who are you full of she's like i know you <laughs> i feel like iris gave her that look like mm -hmm. uh <laughs> like i'm sure i've heard that a million times from barry uh iris points out that reyes and joss actually don't know each other like uh-uh and then after reviewing her file realizes that she had a perfect record she had no no beef that she looks like she was a scapegoat for the military like all of a sudden she she was in the field uh, everything was classified then she was uh benched and then all of a sudden di dishonorably discharged so uh she drops the lovely line of your father gets more second chances than anyone i've ever met people deserve those second chances iris west allen folks she didn't push it on her she didn't force it on her she planted the seed and she let uh nora be an adult and figure it out and i like that because that's how you would parent an adult <laughs> you ain't about to hold her hand but at the same time you're going to give her uh wisdom and that's what that is so uh i love that both barry and uh iris iris always had the wisdom but barry definitely has has learned from his mistakes and it feels like it it's not to say he ain't gonna make future mistakes but he's gonna make them differently than <laughs> than uh than the mistakes he's made in the past which were were based on you know other type of just mainly reckless emotions so she she's very much her father's child um Cisco is trying to make a cure with the shards and out of the blue just as he's about to extract what he needs <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed but I did because I saw that damn frost come out of no damn where and I was like the fuck and the fact that K, K for KF <laughs> was straight up just smirking like yeah I did it and and she told me he was like what the fuck you doing that like, what the hell you do that for and then she winks at him and says you're a smart boy you can figure that shit out <laughs> and he's just like look i was going to make that for me y'all had a choice i don't have a choice i don't want my powers this is where he came out where with uh he really broke it down i think i said it in the earlier scenes but he breaks it down to kf because she ain't feeling it she's like i heard that spill you were giving caitlin i'm not with that shit either and don't you be trying to split us up <laughs> like don't tell me i'm i'm a disease uh, or i'm some, some unwanted thing and i don't really think that was his point and uh i think at this moment is where he really does make his point he's like no this is about me and about a choice and the fact that there might be people out there that are like me and have these powers and yet want to like think about the one guy that was swapping powers or the people that on the bus that got powers and then that made them targets for some other crazy ass meta villain to kill them all they didn't ask for them damn powers they could have had their powers removed last year hell if <laughs> technically they had a guy that removed powers but he had to give them to someone else so that was fucked up so this cure could be a choice for people who may not want the things or maybe maybe it's kind of like hey i really i'm not good with money or let me think of something because that's a terrible terrible example i am seriously impulsive so don't give me the power to uh one click buy everything because that's not good for me because that's gonna eventually get me in trouble 
<laughs> that's a really terrible analogy, but say I'm someone like, okay, the better one. I'm someone like Joss. <laughs> who I've lived my life, I've got a successful kid, uh, career, for the most part it would seem, I've never been in, in trouble with the law, so it seems, uh, it didn't seem like they found her as a criminal or anything, yet I have this emotional uh, baggage that is rather poisonous, and I am given the ability to now have powers. Now I have access to something that is um that I, I I have the capability of misusing remove it please there are people out there that might make that choice I'm not saying they would but I'm saying they might and we don't know until we we offer it again Caitlin thought she was gonna be killer frost so she wanted a cure she took a fucking cure what the hell am I talking about she took a cure or what she thought was a cure that was gonna get rid of that side of her so at some point she could not understand where Cisco was coming from which is why I think she agreed to help him at the end it's because she was like oh no I I, I, I got what you're saying <laughs> I did go through that same range of emotions and I made my choice yeah you do have that same right to do the same thing and I think as hard it is as it is to hear that Cisco doesn't want to be vibe you know it's his it's it's honest <laughs> uh omg barry is the joe west of this episode because <laughs> uh, he is just chilling in his dampening power cell and uh <laughs> he's all like what come on girl <laughs> And Nora comes up because after, you know, Iris put that nugget in her ear, she, and I heard some criticism around this as well, uh, that, you know, allow Iris to have her moment to be the, uh, the parent. And, I, well, I can't say that's not a absolute and utter valid because uh, I'm going to be hella highly heated <laughs> in next episode if they is at the skating rink and Iris is not with them. I'm like, can we get some family moments? A little bit more family moments or just Iris and um, Nora moments? We've gotten a few. I'm not saying we ain't gotten a few. Um, but it would be nice to see a more deep conversation between them. And But I, I, I kind of get it at the same time um narratively speaking iris doesn't have the same i mean she does but she doesn't she she knows that she knows that if anyone's going to get through to nora when she's being hard-headed because iris did try she tried to to get through to her but it seemed like she thought that this was the code of honor of a superhero and then at that point iris made the conscious decision to say you know this one is this one's for your dad and I, I, I can, I can get that, I guess, you know, sometimes your dad's the best one to handle the conversation. Sometimes it's best to talk to your mom about some certain things. And I think that, yes, I would prefer more conversations with Nora and Iris really having a one-on-one. -on -one. I think that, that it's coming. And because there's so much of Iris, and I guess there's going to be a lot of Iris in the future that we're going to be seeing or at least a, a, a significant time there that we're, we're going to get it but uh no barry is the parent I, nora has not had so in moments like this again this is why iris west allen is so great because she makes those sacrifices those tiny sacrifices for the greater picture she's able to see beyond herself and in this moment, she's like, nah, my child's being hard-headed. We've tried to get her to comprehend. You know, Cecile kind of tried. You know, I kind of tried. She's not getting it. Um, and she needs to talk to her daddy. <laughs> because it's not, again, like she did something wrong, per se. Uh, she just doesn't fully get uh, the full responsibility of a superhero and who better to talk to than your idolized superhero right 
so uh she i love the moment too that she just sits casually on the ground it's a very you know father-daughter conversation and he she starts you know start trashing like you're reading that and he's like this is surprisingly well written (laughs) and she's having a hard time thinking that people can change and barry is like yeah no being part of a superhero is being able to to see the good in people to see uh the potential and he brings up snart like hey when i first met snart he was he was he was not a good guy however i could see good in him and eventually he became a legend and he died sacrificing himself for people and if i had not given him that second chance look what would have happened and so he's saying that in your position you have the power to change lives you have the power to not only save lives but change people and you can inspire people and that's what he did for snart it's because barry uh because snart admired him so much respected him that he he was able to get through to him in a way that you know that that was able to break that cycle of of um being a criminal and so i i really like that he used uh snart and he lives on in our memory captain go i miss him so much um and i saw a really uh side note there was this thing on tumblr where someone br- tried to uh which i hate when people do this shit i'm not saying look people are human when people when you see someone and you're used to seeing them a certain way and then they look drastically different yes it is it could be like oh shit like what happened to you but at the same time when you cross the you cross the line when you start fat shaming them and i guess there was this photo taken of the actor oh i'm blanking on his name sorry at this time but he had had a a picture in which he had um you know had gained a significant amount of weight and a lot of people were fat shaming him like like something was wrong with him and it was funny to me because the the picture that they had shown comparing him to strangely enough looked less healthy to me than the picture that they were trying to say was also you know like oh you know, like it's a shame thing and he made a direct comment like you know a few years ago i was going through depression and the only thing that that made life worth living was food that's what helped me stay on this earth and you know it's a shame that people have to uh that see a picture like this and make their assumptions and their accusations and and their comments and their snickers without taking into any consideration what's happening to the person as if they're not a person and i thought that was a really i mean he was so very um you know mature about it but not even mature he was classy about it you know because he really could have just said you know fuck y'all y'all is some really trash ass people he literally said look y'all need to grow the hell up (laughs) people go through things things happen in their lives that this is what y'all choose to do yeah now i'm just gonna give you the real story and now feel like a damn idiot i mean and are they gonna feel like an idiot no but at least it shuts that shit down real quick and anyone who is on there i mean not that people weren't already commenting a lot of support for the actor that you know but there, there was those people and unfortunately you just have to uh ignore the ignorance but i appreciate the fact that he wanted to acknowledge for his own personal sake and for his fans what was going on at that time in his life that he he felt that he didn't owe us an uh, explanation but he felt the need to or he felt that he was in a place to give one and uh so i really miss captain code that's all i'm gonna say there (laughs) anyway i was like oh shit they already uh we went back to the police station (laughs) we're that quick and um oh back to the forgot with the nora and barry conversation nora brings up which because that was my thought i was like "Mm, she's thinking about thawne and she even says it oh what about what about earbird thawne and as much as Barry, <laughs> you could tell he's just like, mm, I don't know if I'm ever going to be in a place. I would hope myself to ever be in a place in the future that, yes, I can put past what happened to Thawne and, you know, maybe far, far, <laughs> far down in the future, 
uh he can change but yeah it's my job to be able to 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 acknowledge the potential i'm not saying i think he can change right now <laughs> per my experience however i can't say he can't change and unfortunately nora's gonna run with that shit because of course nora is She's too, and we find out at the beginning too, right? That she's been visiting Thawne for a really long time. She's built a certain relationship. She's gotten to know her father through him. She's gotten to, you know, he's instructed her. He's became her mentor. He's, he's her mentor. He uh, did the exact same thing he did to Barry, which is so trash. You piece of shit. Oh, love it. But, uh... <laughs> now she has a mixed bag feeling with him and she's looking for any excuse to finish up what they've started and uh we move to the next scene in the police station where all the police vehicles go off all the cops run out and reyes casually strolls to joss's cell and gets her ass out with her staff like okay i'm offering you a second chance and no one is blaming joss at this point for taking it uh <laughs> i was just like barry and nora know how to make their villains uh they immediately surprisingly break it i thought i was gonna be like next episode they break into argus and they steal a 24 million dollar car it's a VTech car I, I was like really this is what they were stealing i thought it was a weapon and the fact that they're stealing a car tells us everything we need to know about the roads they are criminals they are not even though it looked like joss was ready to cross that line better watch her uh but up until this point it seemed like they had one but i think she has a hard on for cars anyway because that's what they decided to, to steal and it's a really cool car <laughs> for all it can do uh now was i cracking the hell up at the screen on all of the little screen emojis <laughs> that was some seriously cheap ass shit but it worked because it was i feel like it was meant to be that corny i don't know i just kept laughing my ass off uh but nora yeah this is the scene where nora figures out that they can track the dark matter in her staff and figure out where she is because the car is untraceable because they are notified at star labs that argus has been broken into and uh that's when caitlin was like oh nice <laughs> and i was like oh auntie kate uh silver ghost i like that that's her name um <laughs> uh is addressed immediately by nora uh and i also like the fact that as soon as she said nice she's like uh nora get out there and then she was like um caitlin come with me i need your help so they they take a moment to allow caitlin killer frost whatever frost i still think she's frost out into the field she says silver ghost give it up <laughs> and she's like ah not today satan and launches a rocket launcher up at her and then here come nora thinking she's all cool like oh dodge this and then her ass straight up <laughs> got bounced back when that shit detonated right up in her face uh i feel like she should have had shrapnel on her face that was not very realistic i know flash gets hit all the time but they usually show it in their chest and it was very clear it hit her face um again oh side note how the hell did Joss not know that Nora was <laughs> was excess? Cause like Barry at least would moderate his voice and phase his face. <laughs> Nora ain't even trying to hide her existence. Um, just as they're getting away, I, I knew something had to happen with Killer Frost. I don't know why Killer Frost, but I guess they had to have they had to give uh, Joss her moment but she she makes an ice barrier and <laughs> they drive right past her and don't seem to, the reds don't seem to be concerned and we find out the motherfucking car can phase and everybody including myself is just like the fuck? and uh the car can also disappear so they cannot see the car they cannot track the car and now they don't know what the fuck to do Sonora is like can we reach out can you patch me through to the car 
and he's like i can send out sound waves and she talks directly to joss and she said earlier you were trying to tell me something i like that she doesn't knock her out the fact that she was about to knock out her, her counterpoint but she says you were going to tell me something and i blew it basically i'm asking for a second chance right now uh i know that i fucked this up and that you know you are in the situation that you're in now because of me and just as she's giving this lovely speech uh miss reyes who keeps side eyeing like she just really met her new best friend is saya and joss and speeding towards nora at top speed because she plans on running mowing her the fuck down uh maybe that's just her way of feeling like because i feel like she wasn't a killer before then so this felt really random that she wanted to decide to run her down but maybe she felt she knows that the flash has healing powers because i don't get the sense from uh from reyes that that she's evil uh so maybe she just wanted to shut her up by running her down <laughs> and um just as the car is coming at her uh they ping that they they can see the car again so that's a clear indication that the staff is being used because they can see it on the monitors in star labs and they said the car is coming right at you and Nora's like I don't see no car and you see the the street start to pave and the car slides on the ice because despite everything else they can do to this car it is still got some shit ass tires <laughs> you can't you can't escape ice which fair tires tires and ice do not make a good match they crash and surprisingly i thought joss was going to turn herself in she's like nah bitch hang on to me res and they go ahead and storm their ass out there in a in a i guess a whirlwind and um that's when we realized that joss saved nora because nora thinks that it was caitlin like thanks for the save or killer frost and she's like nah that shit wasn't me <laughs> um so they they actually transported out through lightning that was pretty cool um and I understand why uh, she's like look I'm not your enemy and yes I'm not gonna be a, a career criminal but at this point I, I've been burned uh, uh, it's gonna take a minute for me so she is deciding to to stay I mean at this point geez she's been in jail twice she's it looks like she's broken out twice even if the <laughs> Nora was to vouch for her uh, you know I don't know it don't, it don't look great for joss uh so you know she's she's gonna have to make her own path and i think she's decided that you know at least reyes she's a friend and she showed up when i was in trouble and she's the last friend that the only friend it seems that i have left so and i, I appreciate that she didn't really knock her friend out so they're gonna form the young rogues i guess uh so that could be cute for like oh that could be so cute oh my god if they get barred oh my god if they get barred um <laughs> and they do the oh and they do the twins oh. anyway uh we finally get to the end of the episode barry is so excited he could finally come out 24 hours is up they're watching the countdown uh clock uh barry iris and nora and he's so excited um that he is normal again and he uh nora tells him about joss and she's like i hope i i got through to her um and we you know we can move forward from here and he's like oh looks like you found your own leonard snart and i was like oh and then cecile comes up and she's like y'all fuck y'all on my first day <laughs> back y'all just fucked everything up for me i just want y'all to know this uh <laughs> But then she starts uh, looking for Cisco because she needs a, a, what was that, caliber? She's still using that thing to block her, her, so that's what she's going to do. Is she's going to use that to block her stuff so that she doesn't, uh, you know, randomly get attacked by people's emotions. <laughs> um, Iris and Barry, they do the little side hug. She knows that it's hard being a parent sometimes and he says, but there's nothing like it. Really cute. And then we go back to Cisco and Caitlin, and he's writing on his chalkboard trying to figure out this formula that Killer Frost ruined for him. And uh, you see a coat fly onto him, and he's kind of like, mm, you know what you did. <laughs> or you know what your sister did, basically, or your twin. And she's kind of like, mm, you want to go see a movie? 
Uh, they're kind of a little back and forth banter. Like, he's not angry at her. I love that. Um, but he's like, you know the elephant in the room stands between us. And Killer Frost came out because, you know, she's taking your side. So it's really two against one here. And, <laughs> um, you know, I guess I, I missed the movie that she said her and Killer Frost agree on. It's the only movie that they agree on. And he is like, you know let's go and or where are we going and she's like somewhere cold and they go to her dad's lab which they haven't mentioned anything about her dad in a while which I'm perfectly fine with that as well eventually that's gonna be a thing I'm not in a rush to get there uh, this is more important because she um, talks to him and says that hey I'm here because there's some whatever in this lab that my dad was working on that's going to help us make this cure. And I've decided that uh, I'm going to help you make it. And he, he calls her out on that. Like there's there's a difference between, um, you know, you saying I, I have the right to make my choice and a difference between you actively helping me make this cure. And he said, and she says, which I think is a really nice response is that, you know, I heard what you said and you're right. This is about a choice. And I need to be involved in this because yes, I've made my choice. Yes, you've made my choice, your choice. And if we can agree, which I'm glad they did agree that we will never force someone to take the cure. I think that is, that's a good middle ground for these characters and a good way to really introduce some conflict in the future with metahumans, whether or not they, they keep or don't keep their powers um it really opens the door for a lot of other characters because i kind of miss the season one where we got to meet so many different metahumans and i feel like the metahumans a week are, are kind of interesting um and they all kind of do have their own side things so it, it only just opens up more of a uh where we're going in the future here um so we get to 2049 because I thought the episode was over and Nora pops back to reverse flash and he <laughs> he's like look I ain't playing this back and forth <laughs> what's going on you need to make a decision because she's like I need time he's like bitch I ain't got time you see that clock is it like 55 is that minutes hours days uh weeks I don't know is reverse flash dying uh is he being executed uh, don't know what's going on with the countdown, but there is a countdown. So That's what we literally sing every time. It's the last two minutes of, of our shift. <laughs> the only thing missing is the microwave and we're, we're working on it. Uh, she says that she trusts him to do the next step and uh this ain't good this ain't good at all whatever they about to do it ain't good like i feel like nora is all about that i love you daddy but let me tell you something i am going to do what i need to do to save your life and i gave you a choice to stop being the flash and now you don't want to bench i'm gonna bench you uh i don't <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Nora is, oh, she's a very, very, uh, you know, she's a three-dimensional character. That's what we need. Characters who are, yes, is she a little naive to trust him, but it's kind of like, I'm already in it now. I mean, he did, as he pointed out, did I not give you what you needed? Did I not teach you how to use your powers? Did I not uh show you how to time travel so that you can meet your dad i did my end of the bargain i think even barry you know how many times does he go back in 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 uh in time and make a deal with the devil i feel like this is just another deal with the devil so i and I, it's very disappointing to me to see these female fans really rip a character to shreds for the same things that the male white protagonist did in his earlier seasons almost beat for beat in some ways and yet there was nearly not nearly as much complaint and I find that very disappointing because she very much is falling into 
uh, the, 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 the trope of being a speedster. It's too much power, too much ability to change. And when you have had something so horrible happen to you, it's hard to deny that that need, that want to, to change it. Barry did it. He did it once. He almost did it again if Jay hadn't ripped his ass out of the timeline and said, sit your ass down. I mean, this is, Nora doesn't have that. She doesn't have that yet. And because she can't tell them what's happening, there's no one to yank her back from the edge. So she's just falling further and further because what she wants at the end of the day is too precious for her to lose. She wants her family and she wants an intact. She's getting to know it's almost worse for her if you think about it. Her She goes back to her future. She has the mom that's still a stranger to her. She has the dad that's still gone. She doesn't have the friends and she comes every day back in the future and she's seen this world that she's never known and it's 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 happy it's fun it's exciting it's 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 a joy to be around it's what she always had it's something that she feels was 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 taken from her and she feels a very visceral reaction to have that back and now i have the power to change that why shouldn't i why why shouldn't i make myself a better future who am i really hurting and does their hurt <laughs> uh, how does my, my hurt compare my pain compared to their pain um, Barry has always been selfish in the past with a lot of his decisions and we know this and that's the part of the lesson of becoming a superhero but that's why Barry becomes the Flash the one that makes Arrow want to sacrifice his own life so that he can continue on because Barry will continue to make those mistakes but grow from them and come out of it a better person and literally sacrifice himself again and again and again just to make up for those mistakes. So, um, you know, Nora's got a lot to still learn. And I don't feel like it, it's uh, beyond the realm of possibility that she's being duped here. That uh, she wants what she wants so bad that she's willing to to ignore all the red flags that she knows. That she knows deep in her soul that... I'm being told not to trust this man, but he is the only one that can give me what I want. And that's where it comes down to. So, a great episode, in my opinion, of The Flash. Did I get my score rating? I think I said I was a 9.2 out of 10 for me. I'm sorry it is late. I wanted to get it up yesterday, but y'all know I'm a single mom and I work full time. So, shit happens. My daughter got her, her report card yesterday and it was alright. But uh, she had some excessive talking on there. And then she don't reply to me. This is my smart ass child. Uh, <laughs> she don't reply to me. Well, mom, when people talk to me, if I don't talk back to them, that's rude. And I'm like, really? We gonna go there? All right, though. But it's a valid point. Um, <laughs> so got caught up with that and just other things going on. So uh i'm probably not gonna get since it's so late right now i'm probably not gonna get to uh a preacher or haunting tonight but i'm gonna double up tomorrow so uh, i'll have star trek discovery tomorrow and i'll probably do the haunting of hill house um and then we'll see what we do saturday and sunday i might pop out a preacher as well this week and um we're definitely doing expanse this week as well so if you want to find this podcast, you can find it at uh, Podbean, iTunes, and Spotify at Black Girl Couch Reviews. You can uh, find me on my social medias at Christina J16831 on Twitter, slowly on Dragonous Miracle on Tumblr. Make sure to like, leave a comment, and if you want to send feedback, you can send that to blackgirlcouch at gmail.com. It's been real, guys. Peace.